All right. Uh, so, well, welcome back. And um, so we, we saw in the previous part that um, by the method of dominant balance, the, uh, the variable y that we're solving for should scale as e to the power of one half. Um, and in fact, this is, uh, this is the first time we're seeing that actually a perturbation expansion could also have fractional powers of epsilon. Um, and, we, and we'll see uh, the, the whole series, how that, how, how that comes about. Um, so, so how do we use this? How do we use this information in order to solve for the roots of this equation now? Given that y scales as epsilon to the power of half, what we can now do is, um, we we'll now define a new variable, which is big O1, order one, um, which we can define as, let's say the variable eta, which is y divided by e to the power, epsilon to the power of half, right? Because if y scales as epsilon to the power of half, then y divided by epsilon to the power of half, which is eta, would be an, a, a variable that's order one. And let's recast uh, this equation in terms of the variable eta now and see what do we get. So if we substitute for eta here, um, if we substitute for y there, um, y square is, or in other words, y is eta times e to the square root of e, so e to the power of half. Okay. So y square is, so let's look at this equation in terms of eta. Um, draw this line here. So y square would be eta square times epsilon minus 2 times y, which is 2 eta um, epsilon to the power of half. And then there's an epsilon here. So epsilon to the power of 3 half minus 3 epsilon is 0. Okay. Uh, and we can get rid of a common factor of epsilon. So we can cancel this, this factor, this factor, and one epsilon here. And that will give us... Um, a new equation which is eta square minus 2 eta epsilon to the power of half minus 3 equals 0. Okay, uh, so now these two terms are the dominant terms which we identified before and now in terms of variable eta they are order 1 whereas this term so eta is order 1, eta is order 1, this is order 1 Whereas this term also has a factor e to the power of epsilon to the power of half, which makes this term the small term, so the small parameter. So this is the term that's actually the small, uh, the, 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 the term which is insignificant in comparison to the other two, um, 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 to our leading order approximation. And what this tells us is that, in fact, we should look for a series solution for eta, which is in powers of epsilon to the power of half. So how does that work? Well, um, we'll now go back here. And we look for a solution for eta. Uh, look for eta, which is eta naught plus eta one to the power of half. To leading order in uh, epsilon, sorry, uh, eta one times epsilon to the power of half to leading order. Um, so let's use this as our um, ansatz for the solution. Plug it there and solve for eta naught and eta one. So what does this give us? Um, so eta square would be eta naught plus eta one epsilon half square minus 2 um, eta naught plus eta 1 epsilon to the power of half epsilon to the power of half minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Um, and again, we are ignoring here terms of order epsilon and higher. Um, so now if we simplify this equation and collect like parts. So first of all, we square this. So we'll have eta square. Then we have a cross term plus two 
eta naught, eta one, epsilon to the power of half. Then we have minus two eta naught, epsilon to the power of half, minus three equals zero. Okay, so this is actually uh, the form of our regular perturbation series that we're assuming in powers of eta to the power of half, then eta, then eta to the power of three half and so on. We're ignoring this term. Uh, we're, we're, we're only considering it to big O epsilon. Um, and then, and then in, in the way that we were solving previous perturbation problems, uh, we'll just put in this ansatz into, the, into this equation and solve for eta naught and eta one. So to leading order, we find that the, the so, so let's write down all the all the terms that are appearing here. Um, okay, so so order epsilon to the power of zero is eta naught square minus three equals zero. And this gives us eta naught is plus minus square root three. So this gives us two roots, and that's our uh, epsilon to the power of zero um, solution. Then what about epsilon to the power of half? And again, uh, even though this is an expansion in fractional powers of epsilon, we'll continue to make the assumption that we'll compare the coefficients of um, powers of epsilon to zero. Uh, so if you have an equation on the left hand side equals to zero, we'll compare all the coefficients of all the powers of epsilon to zero independently. And then we have this term, which is epsilon to the power of half, two eta naught eta one minus two eta naught is zero. And this gives us eta one is one. So uh, the overall series solution in in terms of the variable eta looks like eta as a function of epsilon is plus minus square root three plus one times epsilon to the power of half. Okay. Um, now now if you recall, uh, we had defined eta as y divided by square root epsilon. So y, the variable y is epsilon to the power of half times eta and that will give us, um, if you multiply this the right hand side by epsilon to the power of half, we'll find it's epsilon plus minus square root three times square root of epsilon, which we can write collectively as this, right? Um, and then if you go back, go one step back, we, uh, we had defined y as x minus one, and therefore x as a function of epsilon is y plus one. So the overall solution is y, one plus epsilon plus minus square root three epsilon. So this is actually uh, the perturbative C solution for x as a function of epsilon. And um, as a consistency check, what one can do is we can go back to this equation and solve for the roots exactly because this is still a quadratic equation and do a Taylor series expansion of the square root term to see that actually um, the, the powers of expansion that we're looking for are one. Uh, then the next significant term is square root of epsilon and then the last term is epsilon. So maybe we should write it uh, the other way around. So, so that we write an increasing powers of epsilon. So it's one uh, plus minus square root three epsilon plus epsilon. That's, uh, if, if we do a Taylor series expansion, we find that that's exactly equal to uh, this kind of an expansion that we've obtained using perturbation series. Um, so, so we've covered quite a few topics here, which is we started with a quadratic equation and found that a naive perturbation expansion in linear powers of epsilon is not consistent. Uh, we then introduced two ideas, which is uh, 
which is related to asymptotic relations uh, a function being much less than another function and uh, a function being asymptotic to another function um, and then we talked about the method of dominant balance to figure out from an equation pairs of terms which are dominant uh, which balance each other and are dominant in comparison to other terms in the equation and we use those ideas to consistently solve for the roots of the quadratic equation um, and, and we find that actually this gives us a series which has fractional powers of epsilon and not just integer powers of epsilon which as we can see is something quite different from a, just a Taylor series or a power series expansion um, um, of, of functions. So, um, so, so yeah, let's talk uh, more about um, uh, so, so some other uh, equations and other ideas and perturbation series and uh, perturbation series in uh, our next video. So, thanks, thanks, and uh, see you next time.